All right, what's going on guys? And today we're going to talk about Vinland Saga, the Baltic War arc. Now, this is technically part of the Eastern Expedition arc. It goes from chapters 100 to 166, but we already talked about the first 24 chapters already, so this is just going to be the remaining half of that arc. Of course, if you want to watch that video, you can click up here, but let's get started. But before that, if you guys are looking for some hot anime merch at a discounted price, I got some great deals for you. And if you use the code in my description, you can get 10% off today. It's the beginning of the Baltic War, and Thorkell's preparing to fight a ferocious bear. The tall man cracks his knuckles as he remains fairly calm. Thorkell punches one of the bear's teeth out, and squeezes it unconscious with a bear hug. Floki arrives as Thorkell expresses his wish for war. We are now at the royal seat of Denmark, Jelling, April 1019. Leif Erikson instructs the group to trade seal skins for necessary supplies. We then see Sigurd and his group in bondage. Sigurd then happens to lock eyes with Gudrid. <laughs> Thorfinn is then confronted by a man that recognizes him. Thorkell's here right now at the castle, says the man. However, Thorfinn pretends not to know Thorkell. The man pulls out his sword to prove he is Thorfinn, but Hild shoots a bolt right through his arm. Thorfinn is then taken to Thorkell's encampment, as a tall man wastes no time in attacking him. Floki is shocked to find out that Thorfinn is the son of Thors, the troll of Yam. Floki recalls how he told Thors to withdraw from engagement with the enemy, but Thors would not capitulate. Floki states that the Yam Vikings are experiencing disorder, as the chieftain seat is currently vacant at the moment. Vaughn covets the seat, and he and his supporters have left Jamsburg. Now, Floki can't take the seat because he's 50 years old, and at the age of 50, you have to retire. Therefore, he wants his 10-year-old grandson, Balder, to claim the seat. Thorkell recommends Thorfinn for the role as chieftain. Thorfinn, however, makes his intentions known that he has no interest in the seat. Thorfinn's crew leaves on their ships, as Floki sends two ships after him. Now, to get rid of their captors, Thorfinn wants to separate temporarily, so they only chase after him. Thorfinn and Hild exit the boat, with the plan of reconvening with the others in Odense. Gudrid is pissed that Thorfinn tries to shoulder everything on himself. Floki's men begin by destroying all the boats, to prevent Thorfinn and Hild from escaping. Thorfinn then yells for the Jam Vikings to stop. He quickly finds himself surrounded, as he has no other choice but to fight. A soldier then throws a blade at him out of mercy. Thorfinn says that they are slow with the armor that they're wearing. He proceeds to knock them down as Hill provides assistance from the bushes. The commander urges the last two to attack, but they kill him instead. It turns out that these two are from the Van Battalion, and they're paying their respects to Thorfinn. They are Eskel and Vraj, and they want his help in destroying the villainous Floki. I am just a traveling merchant. Don't try to get me involved, yells Thorfinn. After terrifying one of the villagers, Thorfinn realizes that he cannot live amongst the common folk. At Jamsburg, Floki hears about the failed assassination on Thorfinn's life. Floki then commands his grandson Balder on his hard training. Balder wants to show his grandfather his new fishing rod, as Garm throws a spear through one of the maids. Turns out that she was an assassin, as Floki doubles the number of guards to protect Balder. Now, Sigurd has had enough of the forced labor, as Thorkel confronts him. After gushing over the tall man, Sigurd happily gets back to work. Ulf has been appointed to army overseer, as he hands Thorkel a letter from his highness. Eskel then takes Thorf into Van's garrison. I am Van, says the leader. Van starts crying, realizing that Thorfinn is the son of Thors. He then reveals that Floki was behind the plot to murder Thors. By the testimony of a previous member of Askeladd's crew, Floki ordered Askeladd to kill Thors. Come, Thorfinn, avenge your father's death, says Van. Thorfinn then goes to think by himself. Hild reminds him that if he avenges his father's death, she'll do the same, meaning he'll be dead. For a brief moment, Thorfinn was subsumed by rage. Despite his warrior spirit, Thorfinn wants to be a kinder person. The dog watches over Carly, hoping that he won't turn violent like the other humans. Thorfinn then meets with Atli from Askeladd's previous crew. Thorfinn implores him to find an honest means of work. Thorfinn then asks for Atli's release, but Van will only do so after the matter with Floki is settled. Thorfinn asks to be taken back to Funin, 
but Van says he'll be sailing to Jamsburg first thing tomorrow. Thorfinn, however, plans on changing this world through nonviolent methods. Hild then discovers 10 girls that Van's group has been having their way with. Just then, the men prepare for battle as Thorkel's fleet is quickly arriving. Van! Come out and play! Balder asks Floki who's after his life, as the two go fishing. The boy doesn't want to be chieftain, preferring fishing with his grandfather. Floki, however, is building a kingdom for Balder to inherit. Thorfinn wants to use this distraction to make his escape. Sigurd begs for a sword so that he can fight alongside Thorkel. Fight well, high spirit! Meatheads like us are no good if we don't fight to our heart's content. One of the soldiers is looking for Thorfinn, but Van attacks him with his warhammer. The man dodges as it's revealed that it's Garm, and it turns out that he infiltrated their camp. Thorkel is tired of waiting, commanding them to make their move already. Thorkel then calls a temporary truce so that he could talk to Van. Thorfinn and Hild help the women escape Van's encampment. One of the girls has a family boat that they can borrow. There are some soldiers ahead, so Thorfinn wants to throw them off of the trail while Hild helps the girls escape. Garm finds Thorfinn as he wants to offer him a gift. It turns out that it's Van's head. Meanwhile, Thorkel is furious that someone stole his prey. Before Garm can fully explain what happened, Thorfinn runs off. Hey, why are you running away? Aren't you strong? Says Garm. Thorfinn doesn't want to fight, but Garm is giving him no choice. Garm then cuts him across the face with his spear. Thorfinn is quite taken aback by Garm's amazing skills. Thorfinn closes the distance to neutralize the spear. But Garm reveals a hidden blade within the spear. With this, Garm's got no blind spots. Come at me then. Let's have a serious battle, says Garm. I refuse. Don't try and make this seem as if there are only two options. Thorfinn proceeds to run away again. Garm doesn't know what to make of this situation. He'll thusly need to press the right button to make Thorfinn want to fight him. Thorkel gives Van a funeral ship to send him off. He then switches sides and decides to focus his efforts on killing Floki. Sigurd then realizes that the funeral ship was his own. Garm gets excited thinking about the impending war. Let's invite Thorfinn too. Meanwhile, Einar and the others are waiting for Thorfinn at Funen Island. A girl then asks if they're friends with Thorfinn. However, this was a trap laid by Garm. Bug Eyes then puts up a tough guy facade. And because of this, Garm wants to battle him. But Bug Eyes refuses since he doesn't have his beloved sword. This is all a lie, by the way. Bug Eyes continues his diatribe as Garm gets impatient. When Garm bends down, Bug Eyes attempts to bash him in the head, but it's unsuccessful. Upon waking up, Bug Eyes finds out that the others are gone as he now needs to warn Thorfinn. Now, a half a year ago, Canute was out on a deer hunt, but it turns out that the wolves beat him to the punch. He instructed the men to call their numbers by killing the head wolf. Yeah, it turns out that he said this just in jest. Thorkel thinks it's strange that many important figures are dying of illnesses lately. He then grabs on the Ulf's neck. Don't get cocky thinking you can control me. I fight when I want to fight, and I die when I want to die. Thorkel wants Ulf sent back to Jelling, as he's excited for the upcoming battle. Garm returns to Jamsburg to show them Van's head. It turns out that Thorkel sent back all his war funds to Floki. And he did this because Garm stole his prey. Floki wants to hand over Garm to Thorkel since no one can defeat him. Nevertheless, Garm claims he can. However, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Because if they kill Thorkel, King Canute will become their enemy. So Floki decides to lock Garm up. Turns out his cell is peering directly at Einar's group. Gudrid wonders why Garm is after Thorfinn, but there's no particular reason. He just likes fighting strong dudes. We then see Thorfinn and Hild approaching Jamsburg. Now, Bug Eyes finds his time with Carly a bit daunting. Thorfinn and Hild return as they find out that the others were taken hostage. To save them, however, it's highly likely that Thorfinn will have to kill someone. Bug Eyes emphasizes the point that he wants his dad, Leif Erikson, to get home safely. I promise, says Thorfinn. Floki hears that Thorkel's forces are 500 troops and 13 ships. Floki wants Garm out of his cell. Sigurd begins practicing with his new chain, which impresses Thorkel. In fact, Thorkel wants to see it in action during the battle. Garm is then brought before Thorkel as a prisoner. The messenger reports that Floki wants to resolve the matter with a banquet. But Thorkel just wants to fight. After the messenger leaves, Thorkel decides to do battle with Garm. Meanwhile, Thorfinn begs for his friends to be safe. Floki is irate that Thorkel refused his deal. Baldur then goes down to the jail cells to free Leif, Einar, and Gudrid. Turns out Baldur feels guilty for the war to come. Meanwhile, Garm and Thorkel are both exhausted from their battle. Yet they continue to attack each other at blinding speeds. The fight is then declared a draw. Thorkel, thank you. That was incredible. 
Now, there's a grandfather that is looking forward to spending some time with his grandson. However, he's suddenly killed by a cannonball. And with this, the battle is in full swing. Leaf's group looks to escape, disguised as soldiers. Balder wants Dorfin to become the new chieftain, as opposed to himself. He then leads them to a well, so that they can make their escape. Fire arrows start raining down on Jomsburg, as Einar goes down the well. Gudrid then invites Balder to run away with them. A soldier then intervenes, as Gudrid is confused for one of the maids. Leif, inside the well, calls out for Gudrid at the very worst time possible. Gudrid gets some water as she tells Leif to flee. The soldier throws a spear inside, but only hits the bucket. The Jomsburg Vikings roll a log onto the men from Thorkel's army. One of the Vikings tries to get the attention of one of his friends, but accidentally shoots him in the head. He then gets killed himself. Thorkel picks up one of the logs, but is bombarded by several more. They throw oil onto the logs and light it up, with Thorkel being burnt alive. Thorfinn prepares to disembark, as Hild reminds him that the crossbow will be pointed at his head at all times. Einar and Leif use shields to protect themselves from the endless arrows. Leif is then hit by one of the arrows, as he falls into the water. Einar grabs Leif, as he says, Shit, are we in hell? Sigurd then helps the two up, as they are shocked to see each other. Thorkel's men attempt to contain their leader after his severe burn wounds. Thorfinn then arrives to greet Thorkel. Sigurd, Einar, and Leif meet up with them as well. Unfortunately, Gudrid is still alone in the fortress. Sigurd wants his bride back, as Thorfinn agrees to take care of it. A single fate awaits all those who lost. Death. If you don't have a weapon in your hands, you can't go to Valhalla. So being executed is the worst way to die. Thorfinn then tends to Leif's wounds. Einar tells Thorkel that Baldur is willing to hand over the chieftain spot peacefully. However, Thorkel isn't interested in the seat. He just likes fighting. Asker then wonders how Einar escaped. Einar lies to him and says that they descended with a rope. Later on, Asker gives Sigurd an important job. Thorfinn then makes his way through the secret passage with Hild as Sigurd secretly follows them. The war continues to consume lives, one after another, for no reason. Thorfinn and Hild successfully make it into the well. Thorfinn begins climbing up as someone tosses a rope to them. Nana, the maidservant to Baldur, has come to help them out. Sigurd comes out of the well shortly afterwards, along with his friends, unbeknownst to him. He then tells them to go away. A soldier then catches them, but Sigurd uses his chain to steal away a sword. And with this, he finishes him off. Unfortunately, the two are quickly surrounded. Garm then goes to the gates of Jomsburg, asking for a spear back. After getting denied access, he runs up the wall and lands gracefully inside. He steals a spear and begins a search for his own. Thorfinn knocks out the two Viking guards guarding Baldur's room. He then says, Gudrid, are you well? A fire then starts in Jomsburg as Asgard instructs everyone to prepare for battle. Turns out that Sigurd's first objective was to start a fire but his second objective is to open the fortress gate. Ohm tells Sigurd he shouldn't marry Gudrid if he doesn't want to. Gudrid is a little embarrassed that Thorfinn came all this way just to save her. Thorfinn tells Baldur that he's not interested in taking the spot of Chieftain. Floki then bursts into the room to check on Baldur. Just then, Thorfinn remembers his father's death. He's the one who had my father murdered. Hild fires her crossbow at one of the guards, while Thorfinn breaks the arm of the other. Floki! Says a seething Thorfinn. Floki! Thorfinn slaps Floki's sword away, while taking some fingers in the process. He goes in for the final blow, as Baldur goes to protect his grandpa. Hild is prepared to stop Thorfinn before he strikes Floki. Baldur offers up his own life instead. It turns out that he blames himself for not stopping his grandfather and proliferating this reckless war. Thorfinn proceeds to break the blade of his sword over his knee. Hild lowers her crossbow as they tie up Floki and his men. That was close, mutters Thorfinn. Baldur leads them to the well. Unfortunately, it's been sealed up by the soldiers. Meanwhile, Sigurd and Ulm are discovered within their barrels. Barrel crash, says Ulm. The two are surrounded as Sigurd happens to look over at Gudrid and Thorfinn. Thorfinn will treat Baldur for safe passage through the gate. Floki begins seething in rage at the notion of Baldur getting hurt. Thorfinn then lightly cuts Baldur's face as Floki begins to lose it, agreeing to do whatever they say. Meanwhile, Garm watches the affair from a nearby rooftop. Now is not the time to pay any regard to appearances. Floki demands that they open up the gate just a little bit to preserve Baldur's life. Floki tells his men to buy some time as a man with a spear comes through. The star makes his entrance. Sorry to keep you waiting. 
Garm wants his rematch with Thorfinn, and cares not about Baldur's life. Garm attacks Sigurd as Thorfinn comes in with a small dagger. Arrows start raining down as Thorfinn and Garm engage each other. Gudrid then threatens Baldur's life, however, she's holding a ladle. Back off! I'm gonna hack off the fucking nose off of this brat! says Sigurd. Thorfinn finds it difficult dodging the soldiers, archers, and Garm all at the same time. Finally, some time alone, just the two of us. Just then, the gate opens up, with Sigurd's party walking through. Death Seekers, charge! yells Asker. The Yam Vikings can't close the gate and jeopardize Baldur's life. All the soldiers begin to charge Jamsberg. Sigurd tells the others to go ahead, but Gudrid slaps him in the face. Hild smashes him with a crossbow as she grabs onto the hostage. Ulm escapes with Gudrid and Sigurd as Hild makes her way to Thorfinn with Baldur in hand. Thorfinn is getting weary from his wound, but he finally enters a battle stance. The siege continues as Thorkel swings his massive log with devastating effects. A man entering death then wonders where the Valkyries are. He then realizes that it was all a lie as his consciousness slowly fades away. I love war, screams Thorkel as he hacks people to pieces. Baldur returns to Floki as he apologizes to Thorfinn for all the death and calamity. Meanwhile, Garm continues thrusting his spear at Thorfinn. Garm then calls time out, accusing Thorfinn of not giving it his all. Thorfinn says that there's no meaning to fighting. Garm says it's all about having fun, and everyone likes having fun. Thorfinn then tosses away his knife, claiming that he's going to have some fun now. However, Thorfinn will win without taking Garm's life. Thorfinn then mocks Garm by calling him a little kid. An enraged Garm lunges in with killer's intent. The two clash as Hild wonders what's going on. And it turns out that Thorfinn caught Garm's arms, much like Askeladd did to him so many years ago when he was a child. God damn it. It pisses me off that that man was right, and his teaching just saved my life. Thorfinn headbutts Garm in the face. While unconscious, Garm remembers a time when he was a child and no one wanted to play with him. Even his own father despised him, calling him the hellhound of legend, Garmer. One day, while playing with the older kids, he killed them. And when all the villagers went against him, he thought it was a fun game. Garm wakes up, realizing that he lost the battle. To prevent Garm from attacking again, Thorfinn threw his spear far away, very far away. Now, Thorfinn hopes to be friends with him someday, as Garm says that they're already friends. After Garm leaves, Hild reminds Thorfinn that he got away with his life this time, but it might not happen again in the future. Thorkel calls Floki, as the man himself nervously scurries away. The southern gate is open, as the horde of soldiers rush in. Floki wants to escape on the eastern gate, which means they'd be abandoning Jamsburg. Floki curses Thorkel as an axe comes through the wall. Here's Thorkel! Floki summons Ymir, a hulking creature that looks more beast than man. Kinda looks like Bigfoot almost. Thorkel and Ymir trade blows, as Thorkel is pleased to be having so much fun. With them battling, Floki begins his escape. Sick of war, Baldur looks to off himself, but can't go through with it. Now the following morning, two men share some bread together as the war has reached its conclusion. Now the following morning, two men share some bread together as the war has reached its conclusion. Turns out the two are enemies, but they couldn't care less at the moment. Now, Thorkel's group has Baldur, as Floki emerges from his quarters, defeated. Elsewhere, Thorkel beats Ymir by submitting him. Now, Thorkel wants to keep Ymir so he can spar with him in the future. Thorfinn returns to his group as he proceeds to give Gudrid a hug. And upon receiving said hug, Gudrid becomes very overjoyed and embarrassed. Eskel then approaches Thorfinn and proclaims that he's the new chieftain of Jamsburg. Thorfinn puts on the chieftain cloak and wakes up Thorkel. I need you to do me a favor. Come with me for a moment. The execution of Floki and Baldur will now begin. Thorfinn urges his men to quiet down. With his first order, he calls a Floki and Baldur's executions. Second order, Jamsburg will be abandoned. Upon hearing this, the Vikings get a little bit agitated, so Thorkel puts them in their place. Now, Thorkel has authority from King Canute to resolve disputes among the Jam Vikings. And he's now putting this power onto Thorfinn since he's a new chieftain. And Thorfinn's third and final order is to disband the Jam Vikings. He then takes off his cloak and tells them to execute their orders. Baldur and Floki are seen on a boat, as the boy is pleased to finally be fishing with his grandpa. Thorkel then takes Thorfinn to Thor's grave. 
Thorfinn thinks about his father's last words as he has a pained look in his face. For having played a part in Thorfinn's plot to disband the Jan Vikings, Thorkell now wants payback in the form of a duel. Gudru doesn't want this duel to take place, however, but Thorkell isn't taking no for an answer. You bastard! yells Gudrid as she punches the tall man. Thorkell determines that Gudrid likes Thorfinn, to which she admits to. Thorkell then decides to let this go as he implores Thorfinn to marry her. Unbeknownst to them, Sigurd heard the whole conversation. Gudrid then packs her things, preparing to leave with Sigurd's crew. Sigurd offers her a deal though. If Thorfinn accepts her as a lover, she doesn't have to return to Iceland with him. Gudrid then goes back to Thorfinn to tell him how she feels about him. Thorfinn reminds her he's a murderous scoundrel, but she cares not about that. She just wants to know if Thorfinn likes her. Sigurd sails off with his crew before finding out Gudrid's answer. We're now back in Iceland, Thorfinn's hometown, July of 1019. Sigurd saves one of Yilva's children. He tells Thorfinn's mother and sister about how Thorfinn took his bride. He then makes his way to his father. Sigurd finally makes his return to his homeland. He breaks the news that he didn't bring Gudrid back, and how he feels disgraced by this. In fact, he feels so ashamed he doesn't even want to set foot on his homeland. But his father fiercely commands him to return home. As a kid, Sigurd lost to a girl and play sword fights. We then see Sigurd in chains. Hat, Sigurd's childhood friend, arrives with a key in hand. Sigurd tells Hat that Gudrid is a turn, a migratory bird. Therefore, it wouldn't be right to keep her tethered down. Hat angrily reminds him that she saved his life, and that she's his one and only wife. So don't you ever bring her up again, says Hat. Sigurd plans to leave with Hat and his friends, but his father catches wind of this. Hafton wants his son to become the king of Iceland. Sigurd cannot do this, so Hafton attacks him with his chains. Sigurd says they have no chance of winning, since the armies are much stronger. Meanwhile, Sigurd's mother marvels at this sight, claiming that Hafton is happy to have his son finally maturing. Sigurd then closes the distance on his father, and knocks him over. He says that their land is their wealth, as Hafton commands his son to go away. Sigurd then takes his leave, as Hafton is proud to see how strong his son has become. Now, because Sigurd renounced his title, his crew is no longer bound to serve him, but they remain loyal to him as a friend nonetheless. Hat tells Sigurd he's got a good heart, and that's the reason he was bad at fights as a kid. Sigurd's crew then sails off as Hafton watches from a cliff. It is now two years later, and we're back at Iceland again. Six ships are seen in the distance, so Yilva takes up arms to protect the village. The villagers start shooting arrows as someone on the boat starts to shout. It's me! Thorfinn, son of Thors! Are you daft enough to take me for another? Cease fire! Who was Thorfinn again? Says a man. This is actually dangerous. Stay back, Gudrid, says Thorfinn. And with that, guys, that officially ends the Baltic War arc. Unlike my last video, I'm going to start working on the next arc immediately, so hopefully I'll have that out for you guys in the next couple weeks here. But again, if you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you would. I also have a Patreon account as well, so if you're interested in that, I always appreciate that. But until next time, guys, I'll catch you on the flip side.